Friends, Brian here from Middle Age Mind and Muscle. How the hell are you guys doing? Uh, a couple things before we get going on this video. I'm going to read some of your comments. I've been remiss to uh, uh, this video that actually got quite a no good number of views for a new channel called Five Gym Myths We Think Are BS When We Are Young But Are Really True. Got a good amount of views, got some comments, and I want to read the comments and talk about them. Uh, I want to let you guys know a couple of things here. I have been growing. I have been. I've had to make some decisions recently. I'm not going to talk about them here, but I want you guys to know that I will be starting a Patreon because with Patreon, the people that are really into my channel, uh, I'm going to have a lot of cool things where you can go on Zoom. We're going to have some Zoom chats where we can discuss anything. I'm going to post videos of where I answer your questions about anything that I can't really discuss here on YouTube. You know where I'm going with this, my friends. So it's coming soon. Patreon. We're going to do this, my friends. We're going to do this. Uh, I have been growing. Things have been happening. I've had to do a lot of thinking. I've had to make a lot of decisions. Uh, training and working hard. I wanted you guys to also know that I had a really weird dream last night. Greg Doucette was in it. Get your minds out of the gutter. Uh, he kept... I was like going to do a contest and he kept saying, you're not tanned enough. You're not tanned enough. How lean are you? I was like, dude, I'm not lean enough to do a bodybuilding show. But it was just really weird. And I was in the mall somewhere. I think I was somewhere in the United States or something. Uh, they have some pretty big malls there. Uh, I remember one time going through a drive through Pennsylvania that every town had like this huge mall. Uh, but anyway, it was weird. I thought I'd share that with you guys, but let's get to the comments and uh, watch out for my Patreon because it is coming. John Jeffers, 9581. That's some good advice right there. 56 years old, three knee surgeries and a hip surgery to date, but still plugging away. Very awesome, John. Very awesome. Wish I watched your video 40 years ago. Hell, I wish I watched my own videos 40 years ago. Why would things be different? But you know what? I've learned, especially the past few years, I was the type of person I like to beat myself up a lot for my bad decisions, my naivety, and there was a lot, my friends, but you know what? I've been very blessed with the life I have today, and I remember that every day when I wake up. So, uh, Mike and Mish, you're authentic. Love it, man. New sub. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Mike and Mish. Corey, 9292. Totally agree. 49 here. Diet is probably the most important factor. It is. One other thing I want to talk about is also like the consistency aspect of the dieting. Because being consistent, uh, if you're consistent with eating good and exercising, things are happening. You know, we're older. It doesn't happen at the rate we would like it to. Believe me, even from a few years ago, I've talked about this in video. It's, it's very, very different. You got to be patient. It takes time. Uh, it's just, it's not the same as being in your 20s, but press on, we must. Survival Lifter 1969, my good friend. You hit the nail on the head with the diet. My poor eating habits combined with the sugar addiction and other drama has me up against the wall. I hope someday I find peace of mind and a way out. Fantastic video as always. My friend, I think about you daily. And I, I really hope that you find it is what it is that you're looking for. But I can tell you, sugar might be a comfort, but it's really not. It's actually stealing the life from you. I know I've lived that life many times. My good friend, Alex. I fully agree with you. My body speaks to me a lot louder than it used to. I've been doing my best to listen to it. The first time I injured my elbow, and he talks about his uh, injury here. Uh, and Alex, diet is easy for him, uh, which is great. It, it hasn't been easy for all of us. It hasn't been easy for me. I'm on a pretty good roll now. You know, again, if you ever check out my video of my uh, commandments of the cheat meal. So I allow myself a cheat meal once a week. But uh, there's... Conditions to it, okay? But, uh, you know, Alex is in fantastic shake, shape again. Uh, yeah, so we talked about that. I wanted to tell you guys, too, one of the things that happens when you're in the gym, if you have injuries or you have, like, tweaks or, you know, one of the things now is my, I, I'm very good at predicting the weather because my joints will tell me, oh, that injury, oh, the arthritis here, oh, this is aching. This is throbbing. Icy hot is something that I use all the time. Maybe I could be sponsored by them someday. But there will be exercises some days that just aren't working for you. 
and you're like, oh man, I can't do this today. But with experience and knowledge, you can switch and do something else where you're still effectively hitting that muscle. Uh, and the days when you find what does really work for you, there'll be days where certain things don't work for you. But when you find the things that do really work for you, run with it, my friends, enjoy it. I had a workout like that today. Uh, I talk about it in a, I'm going to talk about it in an upcoming video, but doing behind the neck pull downs, you know, in the 90s, 80s, 90s, it was big. Now people talk about like neck impingement, shoulder impingement, but they work for me, but I have to take my time and work up. I was doing them today and uh, they work fantastic. Vegeta or Vegata 5402, that warm up for bench bar to 135, 225, 315, 375, 405. That's my exact weight progression from cold to end of the first chest movement. Oh, yes, back in the day, my friend. Back in the day, that was, you know, you'd go to the bench right away back when you were young. Bar, plate, two plates, three plates. I don't think I went to 365 too often. It'd probably just be right to 405 and then you start adding the small plates to it. But uh, yeah, very much so. Mr. Potato Awesomeness Fitness Tips. Awesome stuff, brah. I really appreciate that. Blue Alien 85 21. Solid advice. Hope you grow bigger. Uh, I am. I'll be talking about that on Patreon. My good friend, Tall Man Jude, spot on about diet. It is the hardest part for people, whether working out or not. As for gear, one just has to look at forums just to tell the people who are built like Jared from Subway and running cycles. It's crazy. <laughs> He kills me. I don't know a tall man, Jude, if he should be doing a YouTube channel for working out or if he should be like on stage at, at a comedy show or something. I think he could be an awesome comedian. Uh, love his stuff. The thing with exercise form is that even with perfect form, some of the exercises we do are just weird movements for our body to perform under heavy loads, which is very true. Bench press is an example. So I, I went to a new chiropractor this week and he was doing some adjustments on me and we were just talking about that very thing. Um, so we end up with lifters who have used great form but still end up with injuries as they get older. Sometimes limiting range of motion isn't a bad thing as we get older. Muscle growth still happens. Stretching can be done while not under heavy load. Don't see yoga people needing heavy loads to stay flexible. This is very true. And I also think too, like our joints and tendons get uh, stiffer, right? And I think uh, collagen is another thing that I use. Uh, I put it in my protein shake post-workout. And I've noticed a bit of a difference on that as well. It helps with the flexibility a little bit. Big curves. I'm 32 and starting warming up way more than I ever have and all my lifts feel much better. Already have to be careful. Have a nagging shoulder injury. Already freaking sucks. Take care of that, my friends. Uh, there's some good uh, rotator cuff warm-up exercises. I actually learned to do them in my early 20s that have helped me a lot. Uh, you're 32, so you still have a few good years left ahead of you. They say muscle maturity doesn't really happen until the mid to late 30s, so... Uh, but that's good. But take care of that shoulder, my friend. I appreciate you tuning in. A great 8745. Proper nutrition is without question the most difficult thing to maintain consistently. Then working out consistently and rubbing cream on my nutsack consistently is by far the easiest. Are you talking about t like testosterone cream? Or I remember seeing this and uh, I really laughed my ass off. You didn't mention rest and recovery though. Uh, yes, more videos to come. I, I do active work on my recovery. And I do my best with rest. Uh, I need seven to eight hours a day of good quality sleep, which is usually five to six hours at night and a two-hour nap. Yes. So many influencers talking about only getting four hours of sleep and then going gangbusters every day, which is nonsense, especially for men over 50. But your body processes a lot of stuff. It's how it you know, deals with cortisol, too, is when you're sleeping. Sleep is very important. Uh, also, proper recovery from lifts. It sounds crazy, but Mike Manser's take on long rest periods between lifts has been a lifesaver for me. I do a full body 5x5 five five routine every fifth day and do cardio on non-lifting days. Amazing recovery and I'm fresh on lift days with zero tendon aches or muscle soreness. Four days of rest between lifts seems absurd, but it's been a game changer. Making gains after 50, it's a real thing. It is, my friend. Great post. I loved it. Martin Sukup 562, deep stretch is not a mistake. No, stretching is very important. Gray Young, 6109. Genetics do matter. They do. Guys, like, I don't even want to tell you guys what I was lifting as a teenager when I was natural. Uh, it just, it's, people just don't comprehend it. Uh, I know before I went on gear in my early 20s, my natural bench was about 415, 420. Uh, that's very hard for a lot of people to comprehend. <laughs> uh, the first time I tried deadlifting, it was 405 when I was 15. I had a 225 bench not long after I turned 14. Now, I'm sure there's kids out there that can smoke that. I don't mean like put it in a pipe. 
but I mean, can do that in the gym. But back then, that was not heard of. I, it was, and people didn't believe me. And I was like, okay, well, come work out with me and I'll show you. Nobody ever really took me up on that challenge. It was weird times back then. Uh, but yes, uh, anyway, however, I used to be a competitive distance runner. In addition, I'm an IT guy. I've tried to train some people that in that field who really wanted to learn but just couldn't progress in it. We are all different with various talents. Very true, my friend. Very true. Uh, Blade and Fade, nice Jackson. He's referring to the uh, Jackson. I'm going to play it for you guys because I haven't played guitar for you guys yet. This is a Jackson Demolition guitar. <laughs> Uh, and I had interviewed the man himself, who this is named after, Phil Demel, on my other channel. So, for you guitar players. That's what I do, man. I teach guitar and music. It's pretty much my day job. So anyway, I posted the links of uh, those videos that you might like if you want to go to the guitar side of things. Uh, Brain Bender's... 201, ha ha ha, hitting 36 this, year, 36 this year. Sorry, that's a tongue twister. And all points he is mentioning are 100% true. Well, that is true. Johan Jotun, 1647. Eating enough to get any results is hard if you're naturally scrawny. My friend, eating is a job. When you're trying to put on size, even if you have some genetic gifts, uh, you know, um, it's like a full-time job. <laughs> in fact, I stopped the air fryers cooking a whole chicken because I wanted to get this recording in for you guys. So I've got to keep up with my content, you know what I'm saying? Because I love you guys. And I know I'll see some of you on Patreon. Uh, but it is true. Uh, I used to be a foreman in construction would always accuse people of sandbagging, but now I know knee, back pain, and weakness is a real thing. I know now I was an asshole my entire career. Okay. Uh, at Daigonandes8994, great vid, thank you. My good friend Kenneth Bertel, home run. Ken, I, I love your posts, and I appreciate you and your support. It really does mean a lot to me, and I get a kick out of your posts. Uh, do your own research. At 310, sounds like you're giving bad advice. I, I go super deep on Nemo Presses, and it is great. Your advice should have been about his excessive weight and not the form. Well, he's talking about, in this video, at that time, uh, we were working out, and there's a young fellow. Uh, I noticed he'd been getting stronger. I really try and keep to myself, guys. I'm actually a very reclusive person, and I've learned again recently to just, hey, I just focus on my workouts, and, and that's what it is. Uh, but this guy was in there, young lad, and he was doing, like, dumbbell, flat dumbbell presses, and he's bringing the dumbbells, like, past here, and I'm like, oh, God. He's going to tear something, and it's hard. You know, you got four pec tears, and you're like, man, I wish someone told me. And I told him. Uh, so I, I was not giving bad advice, and uh, I appreciate you watching and tuning in. But have you had pack tears? Have you ever suffered one? They can happen like that, my friend, and they are a life changer. I have a, an acquaintance of mine who is a beast, benching 500 for reps, and I always worried about him, and bingo, he's on so, all over social media now, he tore his pack. And so I try and talk to him and give him the best advice I can, but it happens, and your life is never the same. So I'm glad I stepped in and I told him. So that's just me. Uh, and I also told him about how heavy he was going to. Yeah. Uh, my good friend Ken Bertel, Michael Hearn, obviously a unicorn, nobody smarter, consistent, focused, lucky, gifted, and some gear. My thing with Mike, and you know, maybe I'll get a chance to talk to him someday, depending on how much this channel grows. This is up to you guys. It's not up to me. I just keep punching out the content. You know what I mean? But I hope someday I can talk to Mike. But, and I get really ticked off when, uh, you know, I, I, people just focus more on the steroid aspect of things. Uh, if you want to talk about that with me, join my Patreon. Uh, but I know he's been around a long time and he puts in the work. That's something that a lot of people just don't get. And he has put in the work with the diet too. I wish I could say that I've consistently trained for 40 years and uh, watched my diet for 40 years, but I haven't. How many of you can say that? So uh, are, are there other things going on? Well, you know, that's a big conversation. I don't know if we'll talk about that in my Patreon or if I have a chance to talk to Mike online. But again, I got to grow the channel, guys. I got to work on my following. What do you guys want to see me do or what do you think I should do to keep growing the following? Instagram too. Okay. House of Saudi is the beast. People gossip at the gym. Are you talking about men? You go 
to the gym to pick things up. Yeah, I've had some bad experiences in gyms, but part of it was my own naivety, right? And uh, those were some dark times back then that I was talking about in some of those videos. Uh, again, I just keep to myself and I've learned it, had a few lessons recently, not bad ones, but just enough to say, yeah, just keep to yourself, dude. Focus on your training. That's all you can do, okay? Uh, Sus Croft uh, Musterman. Can't agree with more of the diet point and how stress makes it go to shit. Not sure if I fit neatly into the older lifter category with 34. No, you're not old. But man, going through a breakup and living on beer and pizza made my training regress so much. It happens, bro. Put your health first, man. When you put your health first, it seems to help everything else fall into place, okay? Committing to a gym routine takes, what, six hours a week? Diet is 24-7, all day, every day, no days off. That is true, uh, and it is at times like a job. But you have some good years ahead of you, my friend, okay? Todd Packer, 57, 34. 34 is around prime age for a lifter, especially if you're natural. Physique-wise, you're not even close to your ceiling in your 20s. Bodies have, bodybuilders have proved that for decades now, and very true. So that is reading your comments on that video. I really appreciate it, guys. It, it really means a lot to me. I appreciate all the support. Uh, this video got quite a few views. I was kind of surprised. So, man, I, I got to, you know, read the comments on that one. But more content coming this week. Again, my Patreon is coming soon. Again, with YouTube, you have to be very careful with what you talk about. And sometimes I don't always feel that's fair to me, and it's not fair to you, the viewer. Because I know you guys probably have a lot of other questions for me, and I'm hoping to have, like, some Zoom sessions, maybe once a week or every two weeks, where we can all just get together on Zoom and chat, and I can post videos of me answering your Patreon questions. So, uh, look for that coming very soon. All right, guys, thanks again, and we will see you soon.